Within my EDC, I love having some copper items. Copper is fantastic because it patinas beautifully, it wears, the more you use it, the kind of nicer it gets. There's definitely some pros and cons to having copper in your EDC, and I'm gonna run through them in this video. I've picked nine of my favorite copper EDC items to talk through those things as we go. So let's get started. How's it going, folks? My name's Marcus, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here on this channel, I like to talk about technology, EDC, and anything that can help me live a happier, balanced, more productive life. So let's talk about the three reasons why you might include copper in your EDC. So first and foremost is aesthetic appeal. I think copper looks beautiful. You either like it or you don't, but when it first comes, it's often very shiny like with this Olight here. But over time, as you use it more and more, it will patina and it becomes your own. So I like it for that reason. The more you use it, the more it kind of dulls. And I think that's an advantage of copper. The second reason is durability. Copper is a very durable material. It's a not a very hard metal. It will ding, it will scrape. It's actually part of the aesthetic appeal in terms of patina, but it is a very hard wearing material. It's much better than say plastic or even some of the micarta scales, things like that you might get on pocket knives. So it is a really durable material. And the third reason is its antimicrobial properties. It's really good given that these are things that you carry with you all the time, like your pen, your pocket knife. The fact that it reduces the amount of bacteria that is able to stay alive and live on it, given that you, as I said, carry it all the time, it reduces the amount of viruses and bacteria that you might have on your EDC if you're one of those people who likes that. <laughs> but there are some disadvantages and for me the three main ones are one is weight. I like my EDC to be as lightweight as possible to be honest with you. I don't really want to carry very heavy multi-tools, very heavy things in my pocket but there are a couple of exceptions here where I think it's worth it. The second disadvantage to it is cost. Typically, and I've got a couple of these here where I've got the regular version versus the uh, copper version, the copper versions are much more expensive, understandably, because you're going with a metal, with a with a precious metal, um, albeit not gold or silver or something like that, but it's in inherently going to be more expensive to carry that with you. And then the third one is, I put it as a positive in one section because I like it, but is the tarnishing and maintenance. If you're somebody that does want it to remain shiny or you don't like that dull look that comes with copper, it is a little bit of an effort. To, you're gonna have to keep it clean, you're gonna have to keep polishing it up, and it's work to keep it in its nice state. Maybe you don't like that dull look. So I'll put that in a positive and a negative light as well. So let's go through the nine key items I want to go through here in terms of quality, and I'll go through what I recommend, and some of the ones actually that surprised me that I wouldn't recommend. I thought I would love them, but I don't. So let's get started first and foremost with the flashlight. So here I've got the Olight Baton 3 Pro. This is a chunky flashlight, and if you want something heavy, I'm not someone who carries a flashlight for anything other than, you know, picking up things from under the car or under the desk if I drop them, or for, you know, if I'm in the basement here and I need to go down to the back, I like to have a pocket uh, flashlight on me. I don't carry one at all times. I carry about 50% of the time. And for me, the Baton 3 Pro is probably too chunky for my pocket. It's similar in size to the Baton 2, the SR2 Baton 2. Whoop feel the weight of that. You can hear it from the way that it fell. So it's similar in size to the SR Baton 2, but boy does it weigh more. It's about twice as heavy, even though it's the same size, just because of the copper material. In fact, when I compare it to the Baton 3 Pro Max, which is a much bigger flashlight, it's even heavier than that by another 15%, but it is a heavy flashlight. But if you're one of those people who carries a flashlight as like a self-defense thing as well, this is very heavy. It's a chunky piece of metal to have in your pocket with you. So uh, really, really uh, interesting for from that point of view. Like all Olights, they use their own proprietary charging system where they've got this little charging puck. I actually wish they used just USB-C on these things because I often forget to carry these with me, but it is really satisfying. They work really well. Good job out of Olight, they're real quality. And the good thing is that all of their flashlights stay to the same standard. It's not different pucks for different flashlights. So once you have one of them in kind of different parts of the house and one of them in the car, uh, you should be fine. This is really bright. It goes up to 1500 lumens, which is more than enough. I know you can get three and 4,000, 5,000 lumen lights out of this size these days, but it's more than enough for me. You can turn it down to one lumen, I believe, very low lumen levels, and it will last for 120 hours at that rate. So if you do need it in a, you know, you're out camping or you're, you need it for a long period of time, know that you can turn it on and it will last a long time. On its full beam, 1500, I can feel the warmth off that already. And um, it doesn't last for a long time and you'll run down the battery much more quickly, um, which is obvious. It's got a deep carry pocket clip so you can really stick it down your pocket and the light um, stands up as you do that. I've actually cracked my SR2 Baton 2. I'm really hard on EDC stuff. I really bash it about the place as you saw when I dropped this on my desk and actually put a little dent in my desk here from this thing. That's how heavy this light is. Uh, so you got to really want to carry it with you but it's really classy, would patina beautifully and first thing on the list. I personally wouldn't carry it just because of the weight. And also it's just a little bit chunky for me in terms of what I'm willing to carry with me 
day to day. But if you like copper and you want something classy, it's a good shout. I just want to take a quick break from the video to ask you to like and subscribe to this video. I've got a small YouTube channel, so everything helps the algorithm find me. Okay, back to the content. What I would recommend though, and the flashlight that I do go to when I want something classy in my pocket, in fact, it's probably my most used flashlight, which is why it's so patinaed, is this Prometheus Beta. So it's a Prometheus Beta copper. It works with a twist top. You twist it once, you get low lumen. You twist it again, you get mid lumen. And you twist it uh, a third time, and I think you get up to 90 lumens or 100 lumens out of it. Not very bright, better than your phone, uh, which is the criteria for me carrying one of these. It, it's definitely better than your phone. Much smaller, slides into your pocket, into the corner of your pocket. Next year, I carry a pocket knife as well. And with this Deep Carry Key Smart pocket chain, I actually don't know I have it. It's very light, it's got this nice quick release system on it that I, they call it the Kappa Prometheus Kappa. I use this Prometheus Kappa on all of my keys on my keychain. In fact, if you're interested in what I do with my keychain, I've got a video on it here. But I'm uh, very particular about my keychain and keeping it minimalist. And I use the Kappa, the Prometheus Kappas to do that. So it comes with the Prometheus Kappa. It actually comes with a brass one, which is crazy given it's a copper flashlight, but it is what it is. But I bought a bunch of the copper uh, ones as well and I just changed it out with that. I really like it. It's never let me down. It sits beautifully in the pocket and it's patinaed beautifully. This is why copper is so nice. So if you're thinking about a flashlight, I'd probably recommend that one. So moving on, let's talk about pocket knives. And for the pocket knife, I wanna talk about the QSP Penguin, which is a really heavy knife again in copper. For me last night, I went through all the different pocket knives I had and the new knife for me, the best knife of the year was this QSP Penguin in my car to scales. I really like it because it's cheap. It's got D2 steel, which is good enough. It's a budget level steel, but it maintains an edge well enough. I've been really happy with it. I love the shape of the blade. So it's got this kind of scalpel point for my primary use case is opening Amazon boxes or cutting twine. It's a chunky knife when it's folded down. It's got a deep carry pocket clip on it and it opens really nicely. And I just thought it was a very nicely weighted, decent pocket knife. So I ended up reaching for it and putting it in my pocket more than I thought I would last year, which is why it was my recommendation of the knife of the year for something that's like 50 bucks. So I decided to get the copper version. Now you can get this copper version either with this silver uh, steel or you can get it with um, anodized, it's anodized black, I think it is. It's a liner lock. But this changes the knife completely. And talk about getting something which, going from being my favorite knife of the year last year, to being something un unwieldy and something I really wouldn't use, I was surprised how much I disliked this, to be honest with you. It's the same knife, same shape, really good quality, love the blade, but the weight of it. If you're someone who really likes a weighty, heavy knife, maybe this is for you, something that when you put it in your pocket, you really feel it. But I, I'm the opposite, I, I don't want that. I don't want my, my pockets overloaded or for it to be holding me down. And it weighs almost twice as much as the typical QSP Penguin. So this is an example of something where you're paying a lot more, you're paying a premium, and in my point of view, really isn't worth it. So I'd leave the QSP Penguin Copper, or CU as they call it, um, in the store, and go for the typical Micarta. It's cheaper, it's lighter, and it's better. Now a knife that I always would recommend in terms of a brand is Victorinox. When I look at the 58 millimeter versions, this is the Rambler. So the Rambler is fantastic because it's got four tools in it, four basic tools, but within the those tools, there's multiple things you can do. So those tools are, you've got a scissors, and these scissors are second to none. I use these all the time. I use them from clipping nails, I use them for uh, cutting string, all the small things you can do. You can get pocket knives that don't have scissors on it, but I just don't get the point. If you're gonna have a small pocket knife on you, it might as well be a Victorinox and have a scissors on it. It's got a great little blade on it. These are notoriously sharp. It doesn't lock in place, so I don't really like using it as a blade, but it will do in a pinch. I'll always pull out my pocket knife for opening a box instead. It has a Phillips screwdriver, it has a wire stripper, and it has a bottle opener and I use it all the time those little bottle opener moments it's got a flathead screwdriver and a nail file on this side as well and that's the Victorinox Rambler in the scales it's got a tweezers and it's got a toothpick as well so I never use the toothpick I think it's gross I've talked about that before but I have it on this anyway. Now I've changed out the scales on this for some copper scales that I got on Alibaba or AliExpress. I'll stick a link in the description. They were not super cheap. I think they were like $25. So given that the pocket knife itself is like $25, you're basically doubling the cost of the pocket knife. It makes it really weighty, but it's super classy and I love it. Like it takes all of the branding away. People aren't certain what it is. It looks like a Victorinox, but people ask me, is it? What is it all the time? Definitely a conversation starter. Here I've got it on a titanium deep carry pocket clip, or sometimes you can put it on your keychain as well. Uh, I actually like this one to be when I'm carrying the two of these, I'll carry them side by side in my pocket when I'm being classy and minimalist. You can't see them, they just stick on top of the pocket. They're different colors, black being for the flashlight, titanium being for the, for the knife, so I can just whip them 
out real quick. I know what it is just by glancing down at my pocket top. So great, really high quality little uh, pocket tools. So I would recommend it for in this instance, but not so much for the QSB Penguin. You can also get different scales. Here's some other scales I bought for the, for the bigger Victorinox pocket knives. These are copper scales as well. Haven't had a chance to put them on yet, but just showing you there's a lot of versatility. You can really customize your Victorinox scales uh, to, to do different things for you. And I think copper is a good choice, makes it really quality. Moving on from that, I want to talk about pens. And there's kind of three types of pens I want to go through here. The first and foremost is the one that I'm using a lot at the moment. And you can see because it's patinaed. I didn't know a whole lot about Kuiko. I made a, a, a video about finding the perfect pen recently. A lot of people commented on it and people said I needed to try the Kuiko Lilliput. I had never heard of it. This is a Kuiko Lilliput in copper. And when I discovered it, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to get one of those. So it is a really small pen. It's tiny. This is how big it is. It is an absolutely tiny pen, but it writes beautifully and it sits in your pocket beautifully as well. When I open it up, it's a threaded close and it's threaded to post as well. And you do have to post it because it is too short to write with unposted. It's a really tiny uh, fountain pen and it's very uncomfortable to try and write with it unposted. But if you do post it, it's just enough to sit on the, the ridge of your hand here and make it comfortable enough to write with. This is not something I recommend that you write with for you know an hour a day or anything like that because it is a very skinny pen. I find my thumb cramps up if I write for it, with it for too long and it's quite short as well. So it's not an all day writer, but it is a really great piece of EDC in terms of having a fountain pen with a really quality nib from a quality brand in copper that's going to patina over time. Now it takes standard cartridges, these little small cartridges, which don't last very long. I mean, they'll last me a couple of weeks each, um, but they're easy to change out because they're just standard and you can get different color inks. I prefer to go for black with ink every time I, I, I put a cartridge in. And it's got this deep carry pocket clip as well. So all you see is this little copper ball sticking out the top of your pocket. I've been using it for about a month now um, and I'm finding myself uh, going it's my go-to pen when I go to my pen drawer and I want to think about what am I going to carry today let me just grab them because they're right here my pen of choice typically is the Uniball iMicro. I like the way that it, it writes. It's a real beautiful writer. But since I did that video in search of perfection, I have found myself pulling this from my pocket and using it along with my notes. It's a really nice combination. It's minimal, but quality. So I really like the quality of it. But after that, if you're not into fountain pens, I really think there's two kind of options. And the two big brands for me at the moment are Refine and Big Idea Design. So this is called the TI Pocket Pro. It's the auto adjusting EDC pen by Big Idea Design. And it's just that it's a really small pocket pen that sits in your pocket. It's intended for EDC. It's made of copper with a titanium clip. Well, you can see when I unscrew it here, what comes with it is a Schneider Gelon 0.7 millimeter um, pen. You can see how it looks here. This is how it writes. It actually writes really nicely. I like this gel pen, but you can put other refills inside it because it is an adjustable length pen. So if you put in a longer refill, um, it, the pen will be longer and it will actually just turn a couple of times for, you to, for the pen to come out. But if it's a shorter pen like the jelly on here, it, it, it takes a, a few more turns, but it can go out a lot more. So you can even put a shorter refill in. I like it a lot. I actually like this gel refill. You'll see it writes beautifully. It's a really small pen. It put, it sits in the in your hand okay. It's you know really right on the limit of what's usable in terms of being a small pen with this refill. But I like it a lot. It's beautiful. I haven't used it a lot, which is why it's so shiny and you know compared to the Cuico, it's it's you know which is all dinged up and bashed. It's really new to me, but I do like it a lot. If you don't want a twist top pen or you don't like big idea design, the other alternative is Refine. It's the EP01. I, I've had this on my channel before. I've got a titanium version, which I think is gorgeous. But this copper one is really nice as well. They do a beautiful job machining this copper. It's got um, a, this bolt action on it, if you're a bolt action kind of person. So the thing I like about this pen is it, it does sit nicely, it writes nicely, but I like this as a desk pen and you can carry it in your pocket, obviously. I think the other two are probably better pocket carries. This is a nice desk pen because they have something called a PS1. They do a ES1 and PS1 bundle. And that is where you've got this kind of fidget spinner. There's a little bearing on this that sits. Oh, I'm going to destroy my desk today. You can stick your pen in it and I actually keep it on my desk. I keep another one titanium pen over there all the time for those things that I want to jot down real quick during the day a note on it and stick it back in again. The copper looks really classy and I think over time as it patinas and gets bashed up as I keep dropping stuff uh, it will get better and better. So I recommend that also in terms of um, in terms of being a quality desk pen in the copper range.
So moving on to the money clip. What I have here is a copper money clip. It was super shiny when I bought it. I've got it engraved with my MOB initials on both sides. I think they did an okay job. I think on one side it looks great. On the other side, it's kind of off center and a little bit too high on the copper. I think it's really nice for what I paid. I think I paid 40 or 50 bucks for it. I got it on Etsy. I'll put a link in the description below if I can find the website I bought it from, if they're still selling them. But I really like it because I think it's classy and I think it goes well with when you're doing a copper carry. So I typically have, I mean, I always have this money clip with me because I'm old school and carry cash, but if I am carrying my Prometheus pocket light with it. it, it does go well. And now with this pen that I use as well, this Koiko Lilliput, I think it just kind of matches nicely. So if you're looking for kind of a matching set that's high quality, I think that's a good solution. So if you're looking for something to pair your money clip with, I think you can't beat a nice leather wallet. And if we look in terms of color, I think this Bellroy Slim Sleeve is the best color match to go with the patinaed copper that you might have in your pocket. Maybe you want to offset it with something totally different color. Maybe you want a blue wallet or a green wallet. But if you're looking for something to match that colorway, this Bellroy Slim Sleeve is fantastic. Now the things I look for in a wallet are I like to carry it in my front pocket. I want it to be super thin. I want it to be able to carry multiple cards, maybe between six and 10. This carries 12. And I like to have, be able to carry cash in there as well. So it has to be versatile. And I think this Bellroy Slim Sleeve ticks the, ticks the box for me. It carries up to 12 cards. It's got a pull tab on it and you can carry folded bills within it. It's actually a two-tone uh, um, wallet. It's got this kind of uh, lighter brown on the outside with a slightly darker brown. It's hard to see on the inside, but it is a slightly darker brown. And it's got this little blue pull tab on it just to kind of set it off a bit. So if you're looking for something really high quality to go with your copper selection, I really like this Bellroy Slim Sleeve. I think you can't go wrong with it. Really quality wallet to go with your copper loadout. So when you think of your EDC, when I talked about the three advantages and three disadvantages to copper, what are some of the things that are advantages to you? Or what are some of the reasons that you would just never carry it? What are some of the things that you carry with you that are copper? Or what are the precious metals that you prefer in your carry items? I'd love to hear it. Stick it in the comments below. Good luck.